what i will do today is uh, we'll do no mathematics okay absolutely no mathematics and also you know there there is no point in discussing i thought that uh, there is no point in discussing the usual topics when we start a talk on antennas okay the usual sequence is we start with vector potentials and pointing vector radiation pattern okay antenna directivity then we talk about dipole antennas monopole antennas antenna arrays all that is very standard material there are excellent books on the subject there are nowadays also very good uh, interactive you know these kind of things available on the internet on antennas so on the standard antenna topic i cannot really do better than what great people have already done and their labor is uh, you know, available free through the internet so what i have got here today is few presentations okay, which we have built up over the years on very non standard topics okay. this is not a normal classroom okay in a normal classroom if i had to teach antennas over one semester or at least if two months we would not go about it like this is a systematic way of going about it. but this is a mixture of teachers and students i thought a better approach would be to show you a few glimpses okay of some more non standard topics some interesting things some modern novel aspects of it okay. maybe some of you will find it a little more interesting maybe some of you will read a few papers on this okay. information is very easy to get these days so that's what my plan was so the first topic is design and development of active antenna how many of you have heard of the term active antenna is anyone heard of the term active antenna probably not so active antenna is relatively new research area okay lot of interesting things have been done so our student also did the big project very successful very nice work on active antennas active antennas also refer to as active integrated antennas active antenna is an antenna which does something other okay, than radiate electromagnetic waves or receive electromagnetic waves okay an antenna is that which radiates electromagnetic waves or alternatively if electromagnetic waves are incident it will collect the and send the power signal that's an antenna if an antenna is doing that but at the same time it is serving as some other uh, serving some other function okay so this is called multifunctional element then it's called an active okay. and typically this other function that it will serve will be in the context of a non linear active circuit that is that is not compulsory but that is usually how it becomes useful now what do i mean by that this is the standard example of an active antenna it's not our invention paper and things on this <coughs> have you seen this kind of loop somewhere an active element you recognize this as a fed acting as an amplifier so there is an amplifier and there is a there is a loop containing something oscillator oscillator okay that's what it is feedback loop when the loop gain is equal to 1 it oscillates okay now this antenna is a peculiar antenna it has two ports normally antennas do not have two ports okay An antenna typically has only one port if you feed a signal to that one port it will be radiated out alternatively if some signal is incident on the antenna then that signal will come out through that one port but here you see a two port antenna okay. this is the antenna why it looks like this what is the role of that that is secondary but it has two ports 
what does this do? Okay. This is a category of antenna which are called narrow band or almost single frequency. This particular antenna has a single frequency of operation, a very narrow band antenna. At that narrow band, or rather at that center frequency and throughout that small band, what does this antenna do? Input signal, half comes out, half radiated out. Outside that narrow band, what does it do? Input signal, all goes back reflected. That's how this particular antenna behaves. Did you follow that? What it is doing? Huh? It's like a very narrow band bandpass filter. But not entirely bandpass filter. What does the bandpass filter do? In the pass bands, everything goes through. In the stop band, things are reflected back. Here, yes, in the stop band, things are reflected back. But in the pass band, not all of it passes, but half of it passes. Half of it is radiated out. Which means that if the gain here is sufficient and the loop length, that's why you have some length for the transmission line, if the loop length is properly tailored, then you have oscillations. At what frequency? At the center frequency. What happens to the, this is the key to the whole operation, what happens to the power <coughs> generated by that oscillation? The power is radiated out through that. So this is a standard, very typical example of active antenna. It is an oscillator come radiator. In a standard oscillator, you would have a crystal maybe or some filter, very narrow band filter. Then the power output has to be taken from here and fed to a separate antenna. So instead of having an oscillator output going to an antenna, we have an oscillator in which an antenna is built. So that is called <coughs> an active antenna. Now this is not the only kind of active antenna. Okay. Here the antenna is serving what functions? The usual function of a radiator, but there is also another function of a resonator. Okay. A very frequency selective feedback element. So that is an active antenna. In other active antenna circuits, the antenna may be serving as a filtering action, some duplexing action, okay. some impedance matching action, some harmonic reflection function. These are all kinds of functions which antennas may uh, carry out in addition to the original standard function of radiating waves or receiving waves. Let us see a little more of this particular active antenna. So, what do we have to do? First thing, the particular frequency was chosen 5.5 gigahertz. And nothing very special about that frequency. C band is a standard microwave band, 4 to 6 gigahertz. So, that is 5.5. There will be some terms here which you may not understand, those are not important, GMO substrate, it's just not, not important. Design and implementation of a batch antenna, obviously this is not a standard antenna. So you have that thing with two, with two gaps here and some lines here, it has to be designed, it is, there are no standard formulas on this. How do we design it? Nowadays there are electromagnetic simulators. Have you heard of electromagnetic simulation software? What software? HFSS. HFSS is a very popularly used program. Yes, so you people know lots of. The teachers don't seem to be aware of. <laughs> okay, so maybe. Now, today, if you talk about any software, you can get tons of information. Just go to that company's website or just type in HFSS. You get uh, all kinds of information on what it is, what it does. Okay. So, those software tools are very useful when you want to design these non standard circuits. Then, design and implementation of BJT amplifier. 
I'm sure you must have built all of you students and teachers. You must have all built BJT amplifiers in your early days. Okay. Transistor and four resistors. Remember the circuit? Hmm? Okay. So same circuit actually, but some differences are there. Okay. At five point five gigahertz, just making that circuit on a breadboard will not work. Some other things have to be done. Okay. But it's basically the same circuit. Then, then implementation of the group together. Okay. Then there are again finer things in technical terms, don't worry about those. So all that was done, lot of iterations were done, lot of simulation was done and finally this is the result. These are the dimensions. What does this mean? It means there is metal okay, on top of a dielectric sheet. PCB tracks. Some of you, at least, or maybe all of you, must have seen PCBs, printed circuit boards. Yes, yes. This is just a PCB, okay? But not on any ordinary material. Some special dielectric material is used, which is operable at five gigahertz. Okay. This is the metal. This is what it looks like. So 15 mm or so by 20 millimeters. So that one and a half by two centimeters. That's the size. So this is what it is. At 5.5 gigahertz, this will transmit half the power, 88 half the power. At other frequencies, whatever comes in goes. Ideally, <coughs> in reality, it's not like that. All resonators have loss. Nothing is perfect. Okay? So all resonators have some loss. In fact, the loss is quite high. 30 to 40 percent of the power will be lost at, at these frequencies. Some people. <coughs> when designing circuits, amplifier circuits, people talk about loss due to radiation. Here, loss due to radiation is not loss. It's what we want. It's an antenna. Okay? So it's a desirable. Uh, it's not loss. That is desirable. It's part of the operation. Where are we going for 5050? Yes. So why did we go for 50-50? Why not 80% radiated, 20% transmitted? There is no clear-cut answer to this. Okay? If you radiate 99% and transmit only 1%, chances are the loop gain will be too low. It will not oscillate. If you transmit 90%, radiate only 10%, you are, you know, you are not using it very efficiently. Oscillator is generating lot of power, only a little bit is going out. So it's a compromise. And nobody says 50-50 is the best compromise. It's just something we started with. In fact, someone wishes to really optimize this. This is the difference between academic work and real industrial work. You know, if somebody was actually making this as a product, he would design 50, 50, 60, 40, 30, 70, all kinds of numbers and see which one gives you maximum power out. Okay? But uh, academic world, we stop at a certain level and we show that, okay, basically this works. And then in future, if somebody <coughs> wishes, he can go ahead with that. So, you know, we do not usually, we do not usually go up to that level of final product development. We have done in our center, we do that kind of work also. But I'm not talking about those things right now. Don't you don't have to read all this. So some amplifier was built. Okay. All I wanted to bring up this page was for to use this particular device. Okay. A BJT. Old fashioned silicon NPN transistor. Okay. Lot of people are not aware that. The old fashioned <coughs> silicon transistor BJT has been developed to the point, you know, pretty much as much as it can be developed. And today they work up to about 7 8 gigahertz. Okay. This is another thing, you know, somehow people have this impression that whenever you go to the microwave range, you require klystrons and magnetrons and some trons. Okay. It's not so, it's not true. That information is uh, vastly outdated. That's about World War II technology. Okay. Today you can use an old-fashioned silicon BJP up to 7-8 gigahertz. Beyond that, no. 
but there are other types of transistors, FETs and advanced <coughs> FETs, which go much higher also. This particular transistor has a cutoff frequency of 25 gigahertz. Doesn't mean you can use it to 25 gigahertz, but it is usable to about 7 to 8 gigahertz. Cost about 100 rupees or so. Transistor amplifier was made. What does it look like? We will see in a moment. But this, are, this is the result. Do you know what are S parameters? See? S parameters, actually S parameters, that's another topic which unfortunately is loaded with uh, all kinds of grey areas. A lot of people have a lot of different ways of explaining them. So I will not go into those problem zones. In this case it is very simple. Okay? S21 is the gain of the amplifier. S12, small one, is the reverse gain. Obviously it is supposed to be very small. S11 is the reflection coefficient. Okay? See, this is a dB scale. So 1 means here. Above this is gain, below this is loss. Okay? S11 is the reflection at the input. S22 is the reflection at the output. Okay? Reflections very low means well matched. The impedance matching is very good. High impedance means serious impedance mismatch. So this is what it looks like. Basically, the whole point of all this is that it gives you about 7 dB gain at this. Which means the rest of the antenna, the rest of the active antenna, the line losses, that 50 percent, 50 percent means 3 dB loss in that <coughs> antenna, all that combined should not exceed 7 dB. In fact, it should not be more than 5 dB or so. Okay. That's all this tells me. This is measured by the way. Okay. Okay, then a lot of other things have to be done. And if we actually do a circuit simulation and check the loop gain, okay, it turns out that the loop gain, yes, in this 5 to 6 range it does go above 0 dB. 0 dB means 1. But then there is another frequency. 1.5 or somewhere, they are also it's going up. And chances are it's going to oscillate there. Okay. So I don't want to take that chance. I started saying that I want it to oscillate at 5.5. <coughs> if it oscillated at 1.7, I could always turn around and say that I wanted to design at 1.7, but that's not the right way of going about it. So we, since we said 5.5, we have to stick to 5.5. So what we do is, we keep some band stop filters. Where do we connect them? At the input and output of the transistor. What band do we stop? 5.5. Why? Because I don't want to mess with the transistor at 5.5. Fine. What band do I want to pass? That problem band at 1.7. Why do I want to pass it? So that I can take that power and dump it in some resistor. Dissipate it there. That's the idea. Did you follow it? Okay. You don't have to. This is not a you know, regular class. There is no exam for this. So you don't have to follow everything. Okay. I hope you get the idea of what I am getting at. Okay. So this is what I mean. These are the band bus, band stop filters. Okay. What band does it stop? Only the operational band. Operation, this is the bias circuit for the transistor. So the operational band, the 5 gigahertz signal is not allowed to go in there. Okay? But what do I have here? If you look at the symbols here, a capacitor and a resistor. Okay? So I have a resistor, no, I have a capacitor and a resistor to ground. It's a high value capacitor, 10 nanofarad. So all that 1 gigahertz, half gigahertz, all that signal goes out there and is all dissipated in the resistor. The resistor dissipates power. Okay? If you want to absorb power, you have to use a resistor. That's the only way. Not inductors, capacitors, not transmission lines. Those are those cannot dissipate power. It will either go this way, that way, just reflect it, but it won't end. The only way you can end it is using the resistor. 
that's that. Okay, so this is the idea. These are standard practices. So when I told you that old-fashioned BJT amplifier with some modification, well, these are the modifications. Resistors, those four resistors. Actually, you don't use four here. We use only three. The emitter feedback resistor is not used. Those are here inside that red bias circuit box. Okay. So the change, the modification is that we don't let our resistors, you may have seen resistors, they are big components, they don't work at microwaves. Okay? We don't let our resistors come into contact with the microwave circuit. We space them out with some kind of filter. So that our useful RF signal does not go into those resistors. And microwave signals, that's not a resistor, that may be an antenna for all you know. Here's the rest of this. This is the, this is the transistor. Okay. That's the complete circuit. That's what it looks like in a figure. In a photograph, okay, this is the spectrum. How was the spectrum found out? Take a receiving antenna, put it on top of this, end, this circuit and see what is the signal. That's the signal. Okay. Very pure single frequency at 5 point. I wait gigahertz. So it works. There is no junk, no one point something gigahertz. This is what it actually looks like. It stops it. These are those band stop filters. There is a thin line here which you can barely see. That is actually the band stop filter. Capacitor resistor, capacitor resistor. This is the bias circuit. The connections are taken below the substrate. Some wires are there below the substrate to connect. Biasing always has to be done, right? Any transistor has to be biased. There is a transistor right there. There is something else you see here. Again, those are finer points. Just not worry about it. So that's what it is. It is a working active antenna. Working at 5.5 gigahertz. We actually made another version of the same thing at 35 gigahertz. Okay. 35 gigahertz is a very high frequency. It is called millimeter wave. Okay. When the wavelength is in millimeters, that is below 1 centimeter, so it is called millimeter wave. 35 gigahertz is a frequency commonly used for military applications, radars. And this time, the substrate, can you guess what substrate is that? What is that substrate? Just a guess. Yeah. Hmm? No, it is not ferrite, it is silicon. Okay, silicon. Does anybody know the dielectric constant of silicon? Yes? Yes, 11.7 is the right answer. Yes, 11 point something. Okay. That's a very big number. This one is 3.2. Okay. PCB material is in that range, 2.5 to 4 or so. 11 is a big number. Okay. What does that mean? Dielectric constant, high dielectric constant. Well, loosely speaking, it means that electric fields tend to be pulled in. It's a very loose way of stating it, not a very precise statement. But roughly that's what it is. Okay? Electric fields tend to be pulled in. Which means it's difficult to make an antenna of silicon. Silicon is not a good material if you want to make an antenna. Okay? It's a good material for making circuits. That's why a lot of circuits are made on silicon, you know that, right? Radiation losses are low. But if you want to make an antenna, you have lots of radiation loss. So what was done actually here, below this patch, okay, the silicon was removed. There is a material, potassium hydroxide, which etches, dissolves silicon. Uh, do you people teach courses on IC technology or study silicon technology anywhere? Yes. Very rarely, I think. Maybe one or two people may have studied or may study 
at some stage. Okay? So you will learn all this properly. Okay? There is a material which etches silicon. So selectively you protect part of the silicon. Below this, the silicon was etched. How much was it etched? Not all of it. The thickness of that substrate was 270 microns, 0.27 millimeters, and 260 microns of it was etched out. To leave only 10 micron silicon, a membrane, silicon membrane, below this. That antenna. What is the effect of that? The effect is that below that. Patch, effectively the dielectric constant now becomes almost one. There's hardly anything there. Just a ten mic ten micron is a very small number. Okay? Just that much of silicon. Just barely enough to support that patch. Okay. And actually it is too too little. It's, it's not practical. Okay. If you leave that thing due to temperature changes, it will buckle and eventually break. Okay. So it is just for demonstration. If you actually want to make it, there are other techniques. You don't use them, there are advanced techniques to do this, but it does work. So that is, uh, you would have seen the same kind of spectrum, but at 35 gigahertz. That is, uh, that is actually original. People never did this before. This is a publication somewhere. Okay, that's it for the first part. Okay. Uh, if you have any questions on active antennas, if you want to know anything more, I'll be happy to point you in the right direction. <laughs>